Well, before we were football fans, we were members of society. It's not as if for 90 minutes on a Saturday we become football fans and then for the other six days of the week we are separate. And we bring, not just in football, in all walks of society, we bring our perceptions with us into whatever industry you go into. So because football is an environment whereby you are allowed to abuse the opposition, your perception of who the opposition is, I'm not talking about from a footballing perspective, just from a human perspective, means that the abuse you will give them is based on your misconceptions of them. So of course, you, you, you hear you know, Manchester United fans going, you scouts, so on, so on. Down south, they say all the scousers are robbers. So it's a, a misconception of these people. So the fact that in football, you are allowed to do that, and in the fact that in the police, you have to make a judgment as to who you feel is guilty walking down the road, and it's not because you're a policeman you think that, it's because as a human being, and as a human being who's not a policeman, you may still have those misconceptions of those people, but you cannot influence that because you're not supposed to stop and search them or arrest them. Whereas as, as, a, as a policeman, you do. So I don't believe in institutional racism. I believe in individuals who may be racially biased, who go into an institution which allows them to either abuse people at football matches or as a, as a policeman arrest them, or in normal life, not give somebody a job. Now, you can't prove that you haven't got the job because it's anything to do with racial bias because they haven't racially abused you, but you know that in certain situations, when two people go for a job, because they can legitimately say, I get on better with him. You can't prove that it is. So that's how society gets away with a lot of things, whereas football and the police don't. When we talk about the media, I'm talking about, if you look at throughout history, the books that we read, uh, the, the images that we see, the narrative that's told and something as simple as when you read about, and I mentioned it tonight, about Muslim grooming gangs and Jamaican Yadi gang culture and Nigerian con men, um, that gives you a negative impression of Muslims, as well as the con men and the, and the, and the grooming gangs, but of, of Nigerians or, or a Polish worker, but you never hear anything about Christians or, or, or whites, which doesn't give you a negative impression of that. So the media does have a responsibility, but this is nothing new. This is how religion started. This is how, for the last 2,000 years, we have convinced people to go to war. We've convinced people that they're the enemy. We've convinced people that we belong together and they don't because they're different to us. So when I say the media, I'm just talking about generally, you know, society. Absolutely not. Because as a footballer, I'm there to play football. Um, what may give me a unique perception is me as a, as a black person who was brought up in the way I was brought up and to think the way I thought and the, my environment that I was, I was in. Football doesn't give me a perspective on this because footballers may think completely differently to the way I do who've been through similar experiences. So this has got nothing to do with me being a footballer because all of my, all, all of my the way I think about that has got absolutely nothing to do with football. It didn't stop me playing football, it didn't stop me trying to play football and it also, and why I say, and I've said it a lot, that foot, racism in football isn't, isn't real. And why I say that is because when I played for Watford against Liverpool, Liverpool fans racially abused me. I went to play for Liverpool and they cheered me. What is the reality of that? Do they love me or do they hate me? Yeah. There's nothing personal against me. It's number 10 John Barnes who played for Watford or number 10 John Barnes who played for, for, for Liverpool. So that is why I say racism in football is even less and even un, not as real as racism in society. Because I remember when I played for Watford and, and West Ham fans racially abused me and then Bobby Barnes no relation, black player, played for West Ham and the, and, and the West Ham fans cheered him and I'm thinking, well, if they're racist, why are they cheering him? And I knew if I played for West Ham, then maybe the West Ham fans would racially abuse me. So how real is that dynamic? So racism in football has never been an issue for me because it's, it's unreal. Black players in Russia, you know, black players get abused, but not if you play for Spartak Moscow. They love you if you play well. If you don't play well, they'll racially abuse you. But if you play well, they'll cheer you. I never pick out the highlight. My, 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 what I always say about football and life generally is that uh, the longevity that you have and what you've done over a long period of time, the successes you've had over a period of time and the failures, tells you the person you are. They've had individual moments of brilliance, as a lot of people have had, but if that's the only thing you're going to be measured by, that's not a real um, you know, judgment as to how good you are. So I look at my whole career, the good and the bad, and say, take the average and say, it's, it's been okay. <laughs>